been such a volatile market and to talk about yesterday's losses and uh, get some financial advice heading into 2019. Doug Flynn is with us, a financial planner, co-founder of Flynn Zito Capital Management. Doug, good to have you here. Good morning. The, wh what are the people who, in, in, uh, who you advise, say, after a day like yesterday? Yeah, it's, well, you know, the interesting thing is it's still positive for the year, and we've had, uh, this is the second 10% downturn in the same year. After last year, not having any. So what you didn't have in volatility last year, definitely picking up this year. It's not for money that you need tomorrow, that's for sure. This is something, a point you always make, is, is that you're, you try to cut out some of this noise and really get a sense of where the economy is going. Yeah, and it's so interesting because we keep on hearing the fundamentals of the economy are strong, the job market looks good, corporate profits are strong. But I'm curious, Doug, to hear what, you, what you're saying now because there's so much talk that, wait a second, maybe the economy won't continue to chug along at the rate, that it, the pace that it's been going. The fundamentals are definitely strong. If you look, as you mentioned, corporate earnings and even personal, your own personal net worth and earnings with the tax cuts and that money hasn't even worked worked its way into people's pockets yet because they haven't filed their 2018 return. So they will have more money. But the, the, the real issue is maybe the, the economy isn't heating up as much as we thought or continuing as much as we thought, so there won't be as many Fed, Fed rate increases as mm -hmm. they were planning. And that's the difference why you're seeing a little bit of spookiness in the market. I, I want to put up a screen here because I, I had asked you going into this. If, if you just don't have the stomach for these ups and downs, where can you you put your money and not feel like you're having to to be online looking at every one of these moves in response to something Trump said. These are three areas sure. you said we should look at. Yes, so most people are familiar with the, the stock market, the S&P 500, that's what most people's 401ks are invested in. But in addition to that, or if you have money that's not in your 401k that you just regularly invested in, there's ways to lower the risk of those investments. <clears throat> so you can choose stock funds that have a lower risk, 20 to 30 percent lower volatility than the market. Now, in a straight up market, you're going to possibly underperform. But in mm -hmm. times like yesterday, if you open up or go online today and see what, what happened yesterday, you might find that the volatility was a little bit too much for you. So that's one of the first places that you'll want to look. Also, value companies, which tend to pay a little bit more of a dividend, are another good place to look. They don't move up as fast, they don't move down as fast. Exactly. And you get a little bit more of an income from them, which you can reinvest. And then lastly, you always have bonds. If you're a little bit concerned, you should have some bonds anyway. Most people don't have all stocks. That's probably not the right thing to do because it's too risky. And so you want to balance that with bonds and bond funds. So bonds were up big yesterday because the stock market was down big. And so that balance works well. And that's another place to hide. Although you're not going to get the returns of the stock market for sure. So, so talking about bonds, can you just address this inverted yield curve? Because people were really freaking out when they heard this because the headline was basically, this has only happened in the past mm -hmm. before a recession. Right. So a normal yield curve, if you walk into the bank, you'll notice that a five-year CD is paying you more in interest than a two-year CD. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happens in the bond market almost all of the time. An inverted yield curve is when you look at the bond interest rates, you find that all of a sudden the two-year bonds are paying more than the five-year bonds. That's the first indicator for a lot of people that there's trouble afoot. And so it isn't necessarily the two-year over the five-year that is a recessionary indicator. The real one you have to worry about is if one-year bonds are paying more than 10-year bonds. That has not happened yet, but it is a cause for concern, and that spooked the market a little bit, too. And so what that means is that it's just that those are recessionary indicators, and there are a number of them. That's one of several that you'd want to look at, but it's only really one of many that you want to concern yourself with and nothing to really lose too much sleep about. You know, we do have the end of the calendar year coming up. There is some people move money around to, to take advantage of, of current year situations or, or defer mm -hmm. selling a stock until next year so they don't have to pay tax on it next year. What, what, what do you want to keep in mind as we get into the last four weeks of, of 2018? It's a, it's a great question. <clears throat> I think that you know right now if you open up your statement and on there you should see some things. Maybe you have some winners this year, but you might also have some losers. And a lot of the funds that you own might also be kicking out some distributions that are taxable. So basically now's the time when you want to get in there if you see any losses that you have, take advantage of those, maybe sell those losses. You can't buy back the same stock for 30 days and keep the loss, so you have to mind that. So perhaps you shift it from one investment to another that's similar. But unlock some of those losses, because this could be a year where you have to pay some income on those gains in a year you might, might not make a lot of money at all, because the market's generally a little bit flat. It's easy to just kind of ignore those first quarterly statements come in from your 401k, but the, the year end is a good excuse to, to actually 
analyze where things are at or ask somebody who's, who's who, who knows if you don't know yourself. Yeah, me yeah. with your financial planner or your <laughs> exactly. accountant or exactly somebody who knows because this is the time to take advantage of it. Doug, good to have you here this morning. Thank you. Thank you.